Hello everyone and welcome back to 27 Fox Place. I'm making a few changes around the house today and I wanted to add some functional storage to the top of this hutch and the picture needs a new home and the basket needs to be put away and I found a few boxes at Hobby Lobby a few months ago and I wanted to try them here and this cabinet is just outside the patio door and these boxes will be the perfect place to keep things that we need to use outside on the patio. <laughs> I had the boxes on this lower shelf and now there's an empty space to fill and the intake for the HVAC is behind this console which draws all of the dust and hair to the bottom of this shelf so whatever I put here needs to be easy to clean. And this fake plant has been hiding the cords and cables behind the TV, but I haven't been loving it here, so I'm going to use it to fill up the space on this lower shelf for now. I've had this space forever and I absolutely love it, but it's been floating around the house and I've never been able to find quite the right spot for it. And it doesn't seem to be substantial enough on its own, but because of the fruit design, the flowers just don't seem to work either. And I decided to try something with branches or leaves and I found this eucalyptus arrangement that I'm loving. The plant that used to be here was the perfect height to hide the cord, but the color of the pot wasn't working with this console, but the vase is the perfect color for this spot. It brings together the wood tones from the tray and the colors in the jars from the lower shelf, and the stems are a little too high, but not so much that we would notice when watching TV, and if it does, I can always bend a few branches out of the way. I've been wanting to add some type of art to the kitchen and I found this print at Hobby Lobby when I was searching for florals and I've been trying to find a place for it and this spot has been getting a little bit too crowded so I wanted to thin it out and I thought this cookbook stand might make the perfect easel for this picture and adding the picture threw off the balance in the window so I had to rearrange a few things to make it work and there's a fine line between too much and not enough and that line of course will be different for everyone and I always seem to be teetering too far to one side or the other. This metal art piece might be the perfect thing to put behind the stove. It's non-flammable and easy to clean, and it adds just a little bit of interest here. And sometimes just moving something to a new location can breathe new life into it. My husband brought home flowers for Christmas, and the petals have been drying in the basket so that I could add them to my collection. This picture has been sitting on the floor in the closet and the space above this dresser needs something and it may not stay here, but at least it's not taking up space in the closet. I skipped a day of laundry so I would have some more time to make a few changes around the house and I have a few things that I hung up to dry the day before that I need to fold and put away and I have a few things that I need to iron but I'll have to save that for another day.
I got most of the laundry folded and put away the day before, but the microfiber cloths still need to be folded, and it's best to wash microfiber cloths separately in cold water and dry them on a cool setting, and products like fabric softeners, bleach, and dryer sheets can damage the fibers. But I never have enough to run a full load, so I wash them in mesh bags so that they don't collect lint and hair and little pieces of paper that I forgot to pull out of my pocket. And I've had these bags for a few years now, and they've held up really well, and I'll leave a link in the description box if that's something you're interested in. I use them for delicate items and sweaters to protect them from the wash. I have a full basket of laundry that needs to be done and I need the basket to put away the laundry and I have a few changes that I want to make in this area so I'll empty the basket into the washer and program the washer to run first thing tomorrow morning so I can get back on schedule. If you're new here, my name is Randy and I live in Southern California with my husband and our two fur babies, Ace and Callie, and I make videos for cleaning and organizing motivation and I share tips and tricks to help maintain a clean and tidy home and I post new videos every Friday, so if you enjoy this type of content, be sure to take a minute and hit that subscribe button. And you may have noticed that I sound a bit congested <laughs> and I caught some type of bug, but fortunately it sounds much worse than it is and my symptoms were very mild and I'm recovering quickly. And now that I have everything put away, I can start making a few adjustments. And I found this bamboo turntable from the home edit that I thought would work great in the laundry cabinet and make it more functional. And when I'm organizing, I try something and hope for the best. And it's hard to know what type of organizer will keep things organized. And it helps to sort things into categories first. And over time, I can start to find solutions that will make the space more functional. And for me, things need to be easy to get to and easy to put away and the more things that I have to move to get to what I need, the more disorganized things get. I have a supply of stain erasers that I can toss in my bag for emergencies and I thought this pop-up container would be a better place to store them because the stain pens will store upright and that way I'll have some place to keep those smaller miscellaneous items. We have a few lint rollers that we don't use very often, but having one in this turntable will make it easier to get to when we need one. If you try to put a round peg in a square hole, it's not going to be such a great fit. <laughs> so a turntable isn't always the best choice for maximizing storage space, but it can keep small items from getting lost in the back or having to dig around on the shelf to find things. We don't use dryer sheets all that often, but we do use them occasionally, and I like to put a blanket in the dryer on the cool setting and toss in a dryer sheet to freshen things up a bit. And I also like to keep a sheet between towels or blankets that we store in the closet to keep them from getting that musty smell. Get 
We've had these finials in the backyard for years, and they're old and they're weathered, but I wanted to find another use for them. And they have an interesting architectural detail that I thought might work in this space. I have a cleaning caddy to hold all the cleaning brushes and supplies that I use around the house, and I found a few things to help with the organization, but when I started pulling things out, I realized I needed to rinse it out before I started putting everything back. I have a large mason jar without a lid that I used to contain an assortment of brushes, but it was overcrowded and the shorter brushes were hard to get to, and I found this smaller jar floating around the house and decided to split the brushes between the two jars. And the jars help catch the drips from the wet brushes when I put them back in the caddy, and keeping the brushes upright saves space and makes them easier to find. Having too many categories can be just as much work as no organization at all, so it's easier to start out with one broad category and divide it into smaller categories if I need to. I found a set of cases to help organize the old toothbrushes that I used to clean with, and I'll have one case for general purpose cleaning around the house and another just for the bathrooms. And the color of the toothbrush makes it easy to keep track of what I use them for, but I also need to add labels to help make it easier to put the brushes away. And I try to include as much information as I can think of in the description box, but be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions about anything, or if you need a link to something that isn't listed in the description box. I have a refill of dish soap that I needed to put away, and while I was up here, I remembered that I need to refill the hand soap in the kitchen. So I pulled it down to save myself an extra trip up the ladder and remember to take care of it later. I added this organization system to this wall to hang up the laundry and organize a few other things, and it had a few kinks that needed to be ironed out, but when we reorganized the garden tools, I had to steal a few hooks from this wall, <laughs> and I'll add a link to those videos in the description box if you want to see more about how I did that. And I've been trying to come up with an alternative plan for this laundry area for months, but instead of doing something completely different, I finally decided that I wanted to keep it the way it is, but I needed to make a few adjustments to make it more functional, and I had to move the rails on the wall to more convenient heights, and I added up ending a fourth rail, but I also wanted to warm up the stark black and white and make the space feel a little more comfy, and while I was at Hobby Lobby, I found a few pieces to add to the laundry area.
The white flowers that I had in this glass vase disappeared against the white background, but the eucalyptus adds color and an organic element to help warm up the space. And I don't want to add too much clutter to this space because I still need to have room to work on the laundry. This frame is another thing that's been sitting in the closet and I don't even remember why I bought this frame but I decided to print out a laundry chart that I found online to put in the frame and it'll help add a little visual interest without taking up a lot of space. These quick reference charts for the washer and dryer have been sitting on the counter for years and I almost forgot they were there and so I finally found a place to put them where they'll be easy to find. Now that I managed to get the laundry room back in shape there's a few things that I need to take care of in the kitchen. I'm obviously not a minimalist, but I do try to limit the things that we do have. And the more things that we have, the harder it is to stay organized. But I found this set of silicone freezer trays that I can use for meal prep. And there's an assortment of portion sizes and I need to wash them and put them away. But first I need to find a place to put them. And I have a few things that I need to declutter, but I also need to relocate a few things to this bottom drawer.
I originally bought these silicone molds for meal prep, but I don't like using them because the side walls of the molds are too rigid, which makes it difficult to extract the food from the molds once they freeze solid. And now that I have a replacement, I can declutter them to make room for the new ones. I try to limit the things that we keep under the sink to what we use in the kitchen on a regular basis. So it stays pretty organized, but I have a few things that I wanted to try in this space. And I have a basket that I was using in the laundry room that didn't work out, and it's been sitting in the garage, so I thought it might add a little extra storage here in the kitchen. And I just used a little rubbing alcohol to clean the surface before attaching the adhesive strips. And the one mistake I made was mounting the basket all the way at the top because the basket needs room to lift up in order to remove it from the door. So it may be a problem when I need to take it off the door sometime, but for now it's perfect to hold a few extra sponges and some magic erasers. And I needed to do the same thing on the opposite door, but instead of hanging a basket for extra storage, I needed a more convenient place to hang up the microfiber cloths that I use in the kitchen. Both the dish soap and the hand soap dispensers needed to be refilled, but I've been using Mrs. Meyer's Honeysuckle Dish Soap and I wanted to try a new scent, so I needed to empty the dish soap before I can refill it, but while I was refilling the hand soap, I remembered that I had a replacement pump in the garage that I wasn't using, and one of the plastic pumps broke and I found a replacement, but they came in a set, so I had one extra one, but I didn't remember quite fast enough and I put the original pump back on, so I I had to try and remove it without making a huge mess and what should have been super simple turned into a bit of an ordeal. There were two extra pumps in the box and one of them was an extra pump from a jar that broke and of course I picked the wrong one and had to try again but after a little trial and error I finally found the one that fit. That's all for today. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications before you go. And thank you so much for spending your time with me today and I hope to see you next time.